Hello beautiful creatures, welcome back to Of Crafts and Curios. I am so excited about today's video because it is October, which means here in the doll community it is Halloween doll season. And I'm so excited because I kept thinking about what I wanted to do this year for my Halloween doll. And I kept coming back to how much fun I had last year making my original Halloween trick-or-treating trio. And just being inspired by all those vintage costumes and the classic vintage gothic Halloween aesthetic. And so I thought, heck, why not continue this series, expand the universe, and create some more trick-or-treaters? So I drew up some concept art, and today we're going to be beginning my second season of Trick or Treat featuring three dolls. After reading some comments and suggestions on my last year's Trick or Treat trio, I've decided this year we'll be doing a green-faced Halloween witch, a beautiful slinky black cat, and a ghoul scout. To kick off the series this year, I'm going to be starting with the classic green face vintage Halloween witch. I think this is such a fun stereotypical witch to do and I'm going to be taking a Venus flytrap face and attaching her to a natural flesh tone body and going from there. Once again, I am heavily inspired by Joanna Parker and their Halloween decor that they do. It has such a spooky little vintage Halloween vibe and I just wish that everything was like that all year round. So I'm going to be removing my factory paint and pulling the doll back to its bare basics to bring to life a little green face red hair witch. As always, I am using acetone-based nail polish remover to strip the factory paint. I find this to be just as effective as a pure acetone and a little less harsh on my hands. Once the doll head is back to factory basics, I'm just going to dunk her in some hot water for a while to loosen up those glue bonds. This is just going to make it easier for me to pull out the hair plugs and do a reroute. Taking my sharp ended scissors, I'm just going to shred up those glue bonds inside and then pull out any of the clumps and lumps using some tweezers. And now that she is ready for her reroute, I'm taking this really soft and delicious hair that I found on AliExpress of all places. It is not wifted, it is fully reroutable, and it is in this beautiful auburn coppery tone. I think a little green faced red haired witch is so funny, so I just love the clash of colors, and I think it is also a fun inversion on the classic Christmas colors, but a little more spooky and dark. So I'm gonna go ahead and reroute her and give her some braids. I'm going to go ahead and seal off the hair with just some scrap paper to keep her safe from Mr. Super Clear while I begin the face up. Here I'm going to return to my concept art and kind of see what kind of attitude this little witch is serving. She's definitely serving uh, face paint to the gods and high thin eyebrows and kind of a venomous sultry stare. So I'm going to try pull that off and stay as true to the concept art that I can when doing the face up. This is also the part of the character design where the gothic elements kind of come into full force. I wanted to stay true to that vintage gothic element but kind of bring in some modern goth elements in the face ups and makeup. As I did with my little Halloween clown last year, I used a flesh toned pastel to create an outer edge on the doll's face. This way it implies that that is the doll's skin color and the vinyl color is actually the face paint. This is so much easier for me to do rather than taking a natural flesh colored doll and then painting on the face the face paint color as I find that when I use acrylics on the vinyl face it can often be streaky or imperfect and I prefer this method to creating a smooth uh, transition between colors while still telling the kind of face paint story. With her face up complete, I can go ahead and debundle her hair from her paper bag crown and begin to style her beautiful red long locks. 
I gave her a hot water bath just to set that middle part in because I want it to be nice and clean for when I do her little pigtail braids. I think pigtail braids are the quintessential Halloween witch hairstyle. It's very reminiscent of Wednesday Addams and it also is quite childlike and implies a sort of naivety and childlike wonder to the character design. And now moving on to her outfit, I'm taking that same bundle of Moda Fabrics Halloween fabrics I bought. It's a quilting layer cake that I got last year and I still have so many fabrics left so I'm going to be using them to tie this season into last season's Halloween trios. I looked at my character design again and realized it was really similar to the dress that I had done for my Halloween ghost last year so I've gone ahead and changed it up from the character design to be more of a sheath dress just so that there is that differentiation between character design. As always, I hand sew my doll clothes, so I will now condense hours of video into seconds. This actually reminds me that I had a wonderful conversation with someone over on Etsy talking about doll clothes and hand sewing. Just because you don't have a machine or haven't sewn much, it doesn't mean you can't make beautiful clothes, especially on doll scale because it's so much smaller that there are so many tips and tricks that you can do to make it easier for yourself and you can hide a lot of things. If you are not super confident in sewing, whether that be hand sewing or machine sewing, on the scale of doll clothes, you can absolutely use glue. You do not have to be a sewing uh, person to pull off beautiful designs. With the doll dress complete, I'm gonna go ahead and reconnect this doll head to the body. Again, I am using a flesh tone body so that the green face does look like face paint. And before popping the dress on the doll to complete this outfit, I am gonna add some embellishments. I'm using some lace and some tiny little seed uh, seed beads to make little buttons. I am purposely leaving the sleeves unhemmed so that they are a bit raggedy and kind of read in a costume manner. You know how when you get a Halloween costume it always has tattered cut up hems? And now to create her final little accessory which is of course her little witch's hat. I'm just taking cardboard as I always do when making doll hats and just creating a tiny little triangular witch's hat. For the purpose of this being a costume, I am going to make the hat really little so it's not going to fit the whole head, it's just going to sit atop the head. This is funny to me and I think silly and cute and very costumey. So I'm just going to paint my little cardboard hat black and plop it on her head. Using a similar lace to my little pumpkin headed girl that holds her pumpkin head on I'm just going to create a little neck strap for this tiny hat and then I will attach it to her head Moving on to her shoes and socks I'm going to be creating some thigh-high socks using a pair of old pantyhose that I have and I'm going to be taking the classic Venus shoes and giving them a vintage gothic paint of black and orange. I'm using my favorite folk art paint which is really funny that I went and bought some more folk art from Hobbyland recently and I saw a comment saying oh my daughter watches doll repainting videos and this was recommended and I was like oh my god I hope that's me. <laughs> And if it was, like Hobbyland, uh, my DMs are open, like I'm ready to collab. But anyway, moving on to the shoe design, I'm going to be keeping the teeth white this time and creating just a classic black witch's shoe. And then I'm going to be adding some kind of orange dry brushing to the teeth so that it looks as if the shoe's teeth have been chewing on pumpkin guts. I think that's just silly and cute and that's the whole theme of this series is just spooky, silly, cute Halloween vintage vibes. 
And I'm going to be sealing in that paint with some Mod Podge matte so that it is not too shiny but still nice and sealed so when I squish it on her foot it isn't going to chip. And as always, the final step is adding some gloss varnish to the doll to bring her to life. I do think this step is super important as it creates some realism in the doll's glistening face. And with that, my little green-faced Halloween witch is complete! I am so happy with how she turned out. I think she is so spooky and cute and I think she's going to fit right in with my original Trick or Treat threesome. Of course, the final step is granting her her little Halloween trick-or-treating bucket. I show you guys how I made these in my original trio, so do go check those out if you wanted to know how to do that. And yeah, I mean, check out my original three and hit that subscribe button if you're new here and want to stick around to see the rest of the three that I create this year. I'm so excited about this series as always, and I cannot wait to show you the other two dolls later this week on the lead up to Halloween. What are you getting up to for Halloween? What is your costume? Are you trick-or-treating? Are you going to a party? What are you doing? It is like the first real Halloween after all the COVID madness. So hopefully you guys are doing something fun. And I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to everyone who has been coming and seeing me at markets or shopping my goodies over on Etsy and just supporting this channel in any way that you guys can. I love hearing from you guys. I love interacting with you guys. And I'm so excited to bring you the rest of the series. So I'll see you guys so, so soon with more crafts and more curios.